Hey guys, it's Curlab, and this is my first coding time lapse video on the channel. What I'm doing is I'm making a Minecraft plugin called Arrows and Wing Jump, which is a compilation of two plugins I've made before mashed into one. For this episode, I'm going to be narrating what I'm doing, but if you want me to put music instead of my voice, I can do that in future episodes. Don't expect anything special from the commentary. I probably will stutter a lot trying to explain what I'm doing, but at least it's something, right? So, without further ado, let's get to the coding, shall we? So, what you see me doing right now is actually setting up the plugin workspace that I'm going to use to create the plugin. And right here, I'm importing a spigot library, so I'm a actually able to create all the necessary things to uh, for the plugin. Now, whenever you create a plugin, you have to create a main class with uh, methods on enable and on disable in them. And the, pr the private methods you see, register commands and register events, are just uh, my personal preference. Now, me being a dummy, didn't start up Minecraft ahead of time. And... Uh, and now I'm just red. Now I'm just calling those methods on the on enable class. And now, right here, I am actually creating uh, the uh, the com one of the commands called activate, which, uh, as you'll see later, it will activate the arrow or wing mode, which I'm going to implement in a few minutes. Of course, I am recording the or I'm recording the audio after I've already recorded the video, which is sort of how you're hearing me, unless I'm talking really slow. But other than that, uh, right here I am actually creating a, pl a class that'll handle everything. Uh, no, handle all the players uh, that, active, that are active, so to speak, because the command is activate, so why not just call uh, the class active player manager. So what you're seeing right now is me setting up methods to add players to a private array list, which array an array list is something used to store values. So players are well are are a type of value, so they're going to be stored. Uh, and so what you see right now is actually not final. I realize that I want that I'm going to have two different modes because of the fact. Um yeah. Uh, so right, uh, right here, I'm setting up a permission nodes. So if someone does not have a, a specific permission, the server will not execute the command for that player. Right here, this is how I usually um. Well, what you saw was how I usually uh, like visualize my commands. Is I just pull up sticky notes, and type in the command, and with any possible arguments that I might want. So you saw activate and. Uh, you saw activates and arrow and wing, and right and right here I'm making that change I was talking about earlier, which I was, uh, which is like uh, adding or changing players to wing players, and that adding another array list called arrow players, so I can keep track of both players separately. And then uh, right here I actually add, I add uh, the methods for the sp for the arrow player list, and the wing player. Well, uh, yes. For the error player list, yeah. it's basically just the same thing as what's as the arrow player uh, methods are basically the same as wing player methods, except they're changed a little. And right here, I'm adding a check to see if the player is already active in a specific list, and if it is, the uh, the plugin will return you are already your wings are already active in in red and if you are not it will activate you in that specific mode and the same thing for arrow so what i'm doing now is doing the deactivate command which is the same thing as the activate command, except it's just doing the deactivate thing. Now, what you see me changing up at the top are just the different variables that are assigned whenever a command is entered. I'm uh, I change them because I'm just used to them, and I don't like. Well, I'm just used to like how they are, like how, what I change them to. And 
what I'm doing right here is creating a player cast. So instead of having to type sender, I can just type player, and it's just it's just more of it's more convenient for me. And do, doing all the permission stuff again. You see where it says, uh, well, the at, at the beginning of every command, I always do um, if sender is in the instance of player. So that just checks to see if the command sender is a player, and if not, which probably like a con like console or something, uh, it'll just return in red. You only players are or only players may use this command. And right here is where I actually split the. Uh, I like I actually open up another window of uh, the activate command class, which is uh oh god I did warn you that I was gonna stutter a lot and yep so I open up another window of the activate c class so I can compare the code side by side and sort of see like what I can do to do better because you'll see that like I I do stuff slightly differently that might be a bit more optimal and sometimes it isn't uh, but. Yep, so you see me doing, you see where I assigned the, the arrow players and wing players uh, variables so I don't have to type active player manager dot get wing players uh, on the, in the if statement. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and I'm now realizing a mistake that I made in the deactivate command. It still adds the players. I'm going to have to go back and fix that. Right here, I'm I'm setting up the plugin YML or plugin dot YML file, which uh, how the which is how the server understands what to look for in the in the plugin itself. So right there, I am uh, setting up the commands. Uh, up at the top, you'll see name, and it's already gone. But oh well. Now right here, I'm I'm setting up the events for the specific mode, so wing events and arrow events. Uh, right there, I'm actually registering them, so they'll actually be registered, and I always forget to do that. Right here, I am actually checking. I'm doing a check to see if uh, a player is right-clicking the air or right-clicking a block. So, and then I assign an item, or assign a variable called item, to uh, the player's inventory and whatever the player has in the main hand and then I get its type which is its data or material and so if that material is equal to feather uh, it runs another check to see if the player has an elytra has elytra on its chest plate and then it just launches the player wherever the player is looking in or so if the player is looking up and the right click player right clicks with a feather it'll just launch the player up in the air now for it, it's sort of the basic same it's the same concept with the arrow handler except instead of launching the player it'll just spawn an arrow or no it'll launch an arrow wherever the player is looking and yes a lot of usually when you're doing something something like this it's going to be a lot of duplicates and stuff now here's where i set up an artifact so i can actually like test the plug in and then i build it I delete the note. I, I'm, you know, moving stuff around on my de moving the folders around so I can get to them better. And here's where I actually test. Ah, oh, make up, son of a bitch. So you see where it says arrows activated, and then here I'm changing the uh, a profile on my Tartarus so I can actually like right-click spam, and you'll see that I'm just like spamming arrows like there's no tomorrow. And later I'll actually change it so I don't pick up those arrows. And now here. I'm uh, testing the wing. Well, I was testing the wings. Now going back, this is where I um this is where I start to stumble a little because I try creating a custom arrow. Uh I didn't really need to in the end, but I try creating a custom arrow just to prevent people from picking them up. And I'm just I'm just trying to find stuff here and then I end up just going to the internet to find my answers. And then this is where I encounter some sort of glitch, and then I have to restart my computer. And then after that's done, I I, I do uh, this. Yeah, usually if I can't find a problem, I just Google it, and a lot of times I actually will find this answer to it. So these people right here gave me the answer. Um, then I copy the code. 
and just like just to get it to work and whatnot. You'll see me tab back and forth between it because I can't remember exactly what it says. So here's me uh, screwing around trying to get a certain variable or trying to like reference the main class because that's that extends a plugin uh, value. I don't know, it implements, ah, whatever, it's a friggin' thing. But I try getting that to work, and then I just eventually end up going to my GitHub page where I have other plugins uh, uploaded where I just find the code that I need and then copy that in because it's much easier and I don't have to deal with stupid shit like this. Because I, cause it's th this is sort of a refresher for me because I haven't done, I haven't made some plugins in a while. I mean, I still sort of know what I'm doing, but the more complicated stuff, I don't exactly remember how uh, how to go about it. So you see me just dicking around, trying to trying to fix it. And, of course, the whole time that I'm doing this, I'm trying to figure out how I want to do the commentary for it. I was just thinking of narrating. So here's where I go to my GitHub page. I go to my one of my older plugins. And then I realize I'm in the wrong spot. I find the code that I need. I tab back in. Here's me dicking around trying to get the right page to alt tab over. Then I set up the thing that I need. Plug uh, so then that method ends up working, and I have to call it in the main class. I call it in the wrong spot because I'm an inept bastard. Then I get it right. I I get everything. I I do the spawn thing. Well, no, I try to do I try to make it spawn, but. I still run into some errors, so I just realized I just needed to do static, but then it's going to yell at me because that's not referenced in a static thing, and yada yada yada, static, static, static. That isn't want to be static, that will be, but that won't be, and yada yada. It's just... Ah, man. The future ones, if I've coded for a long time, it will actually... It will actually be good. Well, no, it'll be more fast. No, it'll be faster. Because of the fact I'll know what I'm doing most of the time. And I won't have to go to the internet to Google my issues. So here's me shooting myself because it's not actually pr launching the arrows properly, as you'll see. Because they just drop to the ground. So now I'm just doing... I'm like, huh, how can I fix this? So I'm like, ah, no, is that going to work? The new arrow, and that just spawns like a hell of a lot of lines. I'm like, okay, just do that. And just delete. What happens if I delete that? It doesn't like it. So I'm like, okay, what if I make an abstract? And it's like, nope, abstract not allowed. Son of a bitch. Okay, how do I fix this? Control Z, no. Uh, implement methods, and then just minimize that. So it jumps from 34 line, line 34 to line 417. And then I'm doing, then you'll see me trying to, like, figure out how to launch that damn projectile. And I don't even think this ends up working. Yeah, starting the server, tabbing in. And then, okay, it launches the arrow, but now this is where I figure out, okay, how can I make this more concise instead of just having a new fucking arrow every time? Or no, instead of having that just like a large arrow constructor. So I'm like, huh, custom arrow, thinking, nope, how to make custom arrows. I'm like, okay, I look around. I'm like, oh, maybe this will work. So I click on it, loading. I'm like, oh, nope, this isn't what I want. I'm like, oh, I'll just click on this video. And then this video just gives me what I need off the bat. I'm like, oh, really? That's okay. Uh, so I'm going to just do all this. Just arrow, da 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 da. Then I can set the metadata of the arrow. And since I know how to fix my issue last time, I just do this. Uh, then I just end up deleting that whole class because it was useless. Then I call the thing there. I'm like, okay, that'll work. Then it's like, oh, it's it's still yelling at me. What do I do? Oh, need to reference that, then I can just delete that line. Then I I I open up my task manager because I thought I accidentally started Steam, but I ended up did not having to find that. Then gar then game mode one. Then I still want so the arrows to work. Now here's the part where I add another event handler to uh, check to see if the arrow that I picked up has the metadata of bad arrow and um I have a little trouble figuring out that that one part and I think I tab back into the other page to figure it out yep so I tab in I get that all done and testing again 
and then I don't pick it up, but I pick up the other ones, and then I just spam them, spam the living hell out of it. You see me just checking my FPS on the debug screen. I turn off my shaders, and I get some decent FPS again. And then here is where I actually try like getting rid of all the arrows without having to use lava or anything. And then it's just like, nope, you can't do that. So I just turn my shaders back on, have fun with it. And then I shoot a bunch in the air, and then this is well i don't know what i don't know what i'm doing here oh yeah this is where i'm adding a um adding a little feature into the wing jump part where if you're standing on the ground it'll actually like deploy your elytra wings without you having to uh press space while you're in the air which i find to be a very helpful feature yep and then just we i'm flying around because normally you wouldn't ha you wouldn't be able to have normal flight or you wouldn't be able to fly like this without the without like being propelled every so often whenever you click. And then here I'm adding a check to make sure that the players are in their respective lists because if uh, so you're just not having players fly around all willy nilly. Then then now I try doing it. Then I activate and that's that's about it. I mean, I've covered everything. I've, well, okay, no, there's still some bugs. And, yep, so that's the end. Of course, this was probably, like, a really bad video to watch because the commentary was terrible. I've, at least, I, yeah, I know the commentary was terrible. Um, uh, yeah, definitely going to need to work on that. Other than that, I guess, um, I guess everything was all right. Uh, there's still some bugs, I mean, as you notice, like, I, I noticed there was a bug in the post-production because I never tested the feature, even though I was kind of supposed to. Yep, so, that was my first coding time-lapse, I'll, I'll do, probably do more in the future, and, uh, see ya!